Good afternoon and welcome to Balacor Fitness Show here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm Ellen Como and you're going to be with me for the next hour. Now, Balacor is a piece of fitness equipment that I invented. It is something that Gosh, I, it came up in a dream and also working with my clients. It's an amazing piece of fitness equipment. And then I have a new passion that I've been sharing. And this new passion came from a time in my life. And it's Parlay Fit. Parlay Fit is for women through all the phases of menopause, feeling beautiful, feeling strong, and feeling sexy. And I wanted to kind of share a little bit of my story today because I'm sure a lot of you women are going to relate to it. And a lot of men, I think it's going to answer a lot of the questions about the woman in your life that you love. First of all, when I first got my first kind of symptom, I want to say, or my first indication that I was getting close to menopause, I in the night I would wake up and it was night sweats that was the first thing that happened and I was very stubborn about the whole thing where I believed that I was going to be that one person that went through menopause and I was going to fight this thing and it wasn't going to be a big deal and I was going to get through it feeling great feeling sexy feeling strong I'm going to be that one woman that owns it and I did very I did very well for about a year and then I started getting hot flashes. And then I looked in the mirror and I didn't know whose body that was staring at me in the mirror. So on came the weight gain. But with my knowledge of fitness that I have had for over, gosh, 37 years, I thought, you know what? I know fitness. I know health. I know all of it. I'm going to be able to just kind of float right through this, doing little tiny changes. And it worked for a while. I did dial back my nutrition, although it was the same nutrition I've always had my whole entire career in fitness. So I dialed and it changed over the years because fitness trends and information grows and it grows over the years because if you go think back of fitness, it hasn't been around. It's been about 70 years, you know, Jacqueline really is who made fitness popular. So it's not like it's a real old, old industry that I'm involved in. And nutrition has changed so much. If you go back to the 50s, to the way they ate, and then that was only what, you know, 50 was 60 years ago. So if you, well, yeah, 60 years ago. If you go back and see how they ate then to how they eat now, Again, it's been a very short span of time. It isn't like hundreds and hundreds of years ago where we had this different nutrition to today. So I thought with all the knowledge that I had over 37 years in this business, I could sail right through this doing the little tricks that I know. Well, it worked. that worked again for a while. And then I started to look and started to research different things because somebody would tell you to do, you and the somebody, it'd be online or a doctor. I would talk to a medical doctor and he would tell me, you definitely need estradiol and you need progesterone. And then I would talk to more of a naturopath and they would say, you know, you just need progesterone. You try these other, two or three other things and they'll help you. Everyone kind of has a, their own formula. Well, what I started to realize too at that moment is that Every woman, every single woman goes through it a little bit different, although the symptoms are the same. There's symptoms that we talk about regularly, and that would be a hot flash, and that would be weight gain, I think, and night sweats. Those are the top three that I hear about all the time. And so those are the three that I was focused on. I was focused on the weight gain, and then the hot flashes when they first started to come. I thought, oh, this is easy breezy, so I get hot for a minute. You know, I, I can handle this. It wasn't that bad. Um, and then the night sweats, of course. You know, they wake me up, and I'm like, oh, great, okay, and go back to sleep as soon as I cooled off. I never got to the point where I had to change my sheets, as I hear some woman telling me about. But then I really started researching, you know, on the Internet and talking to people around me and doctors and other women going through it, and there really was no basis of an, a place where we could all come together and really discuss this and really discuss what works for each individual woman and really discuss about weight gain, about having to try to stay asleep at night. Now, I have women that would come to my gym exhausted because they hadn't slept in a year, <laughs> getting woken up. And they were having a lot of insomnia. Insomnia, yes, is a symptom of menopause. And it was really affecting every area of their life. Because sleep is one of the most important things that we can do to stay healthy, to stay fit, 
and to also stay on our game, no matter what that game is. Are you a stay-at-home mom, a lawyer? Do you, own, do you own your own business? Me, I own about two or three businesses that I'm working with. You need to be on your game all the time. And if you're not getting your rest, it's very hard for you to function on any great level. So that was a really big concern a lot of women were talking to me about. How do I get a good night's sleep? Okay, how do we do this, right? You know, you can go back to what we talk about as, you know, going to sleep at the same time every night, and that should help. Melatonin, that should help. And all these things might help, you know, have a routine before you go to bed. So you have the same routine that you do every night, and you're kind of telling yourself it's time to go to sleep. But some women would go to sleep fine, and then they would get up in about two hours, and then there was the up and down night all night. You know, wake up, go to sleep, wake up, go to sleep all night long. It was very difficult for them. That was their, I would say we all have like the hardest part of menopause that we go through. That was their hard part. And then we have the woman that had the hot flashes throughout the day and they were really becoming, um, they're really getting in the way of life. Now, one thing people don't talk about with hot flashes, and for women, if you're listening I, and you're having hot flashes, I know you're going to appreciate someone saying this out loud, but a hot flash just isn't about the body exploding. It's also nausea as well. You do get a little nauseous right before that hot flash, which, does, which obviously doesn't feel well. So hot flashes can really, really be um, be a problem. Now, the good news is there's a lot of different things that you can do to make the hot flashes better. Can you make them 100% go away? You know, I haven't found something yet to make them go away 100%, but I have found a formula that I use. And talking to, it's funny, if you talk to a medical doctor, they will tell you if you take estradiol and progesterone, they'll go away. And if you're with a doctor and you want to go that route, that Western route, that is the route I would go. Go sit down, go talk to your doctor and talk to him about estradiol. That's a big deal, big name in menopause. And it's helping a lot of women. I wanted to try the natural way first because I live my life at about 80% organic food and I try to do everything naturally. So that's something that's very important to me. That is a way of life to me and I, it's something I didn't want to break out of because of this time of my life. So I talked to someone over at Valencia Wellness Center, which is out here locally in Santa Clarita. Very knowledgeable, everyone over there. And they gave me one or two things to try. One thing I tried didn't work, then I tried something else and it didn't work. And now they have something um, that Dr. McCullough has it out and they have another brand and it is, it's a mushroom. It's a pills made out of mushrooms, different mushrooms. Now they are helping me bring them down quite a bit naturally. And they're also bringing a little bit of the anxiety because what happens when you're going through menopause and all of your hormones are changing, if you're, you, I know you're going to get this. You wake up in the morning and you kind it's hard to, to get up anyway because fatigue again very big part of menopause is fatigue do we talk about it no we don't so i was struggling with fatigue and nausea <laughs> and hot flashes so and also there's another thing nobody talks about and i'm just going to be authentic and transparent today because we need to be and diarrhea i have all these things going on i have no energy and i am feeling just exhausted throughout the day and I have all these things going on, I'm thinking I'm really sick because I'm not reading anywhere that these are symptoms. I'm not reading that nausea is a symptom. I'm not reading that diarrhea is a symptom. <laughs> I'm not reading this anywhere. Nobody's really giving me that information until I go in and I really dive in and start to do my research. And I find out extreme fatigue, fatigue is absolutely one of, and that's even if you're getting a good night's sleep, by the way. That is absolutely a symptom of menopause because of what's going on with all of our hormones. Diarrhea, same thing. You know, anxiety, absolutely. So what I found when I took this one pill and it's made with mushrooms and has a few other things in it, turmeric is in a lot of stuff too for women that are, going, that are, are trying to get rid of hot flashes, that not only were my hot flashes going away, not all together, but going away. I could feel one coming on and it would go away right when it was coming on, which was a great feeling. But that underlying sense of anxiety that we carry with us from the time we wake up 
till the time we go to bed was gone. And that was, I think, more comforting to me than the hot flashes. So if any of you are going through pre menopause or you're in menopause, if you notice that you wake up in the morning and you start your day and then all of a sudden you have this like underlying anxiety that just doesn't go away, I want you to know that's one of the normal symptoms of menopause that nobody talks about. We talk about anxiety attacks, we talk about irritability, but they don't talk about that underlying. And sometimes it gets a little worse right before a hot flash or right before a night sweat. Because that's another thing we nobody wants to talk about with night sweats. The night actual the night sweats is not what wakes you up. What wakes you up is that burst of anxiety that comes before the night sweat. So now you're thinking, okay, having an anxiety disorder. You don't have an anxiety disorder. What you have is a symptom of menopause. <laughs> That's a symptom. And then I heard someone, I was talking to someone on the phone this week and they had been on antidepressants because they were quote unquote clinically depressed. Now, depression again is from hormones and comes from one of the symptoms of menopause. So there are so many different symptoms of menopause that nobody talks about. So we're going off to doctors and we're trying to find solutions to these things, thinking it's us, there's something wrong with us, we're sick. And that's why today the show is Menopause is No Joke, because I thought I was gonna get through it so easily. I thought I was going to sail through it. And all these other things start to boil up that I have no control over. There's sometimes my fatigue level is so low when I'm driving my car on the way to my after evening classes that I teach. And thank God I am teaching these classes in the evening because I get energy when I get in the door and start moving. The fatigue is so bad that I'm really praying all the way to the gym, please, please be able to give me the energy to get through the next two hours. The fatigue is real and it's no joke. But the good news is, is if you can get moving around and get your mind off of it, you can kind of get through it. Now I found one of my favorite things to do with fatigue is I take a cup of frozen cherries and I talk about this all the time, a cup of or organic frozen mango and I also take about one square inch of fresh ginger and obviously I peel it and then I dice it and I throw it all in a bullet and then drink it. It gives me natural energy for about three hours. I put the ginger in there because it settles your stomach. Some people will have stomach irritation to cherries. I never have, don't want to make, and I really don't want to find out if I'm going to or not. And I love the taste of ginger. Ginger is really good for you. Spices are good for you. So that's what I do to try to get through my afternoons. So if you're a woman and you are struggling through the evening fatigue, I knew and talk to many women that get that ap mid-afternoon fatigue and they start drinking coffee. And especially if you're having trouble falling asleep and staying asleep, do not have coffee in the afternoons because that's gonna, even if it's de decaf, you're gonna have a problem and you're not gonna be able to fall asleep. And then you're gonna have a harder time staying asleep. So we really need to dial back on the caffeine quite a bit. And caffeine is one known source of hot flashes, just so you know. Now, I mean, it's okay to have it in the morning, <laughs> but you want to stay away from it in the afternoon. And if you're having that fatigue, it's really a good time to have the shake that I'm talking about. It's a lot of natural sugars. And get moving. That might be the time that you might want to set aside to go on a small walk doesn't need to be a big one, maybe 15, 20 minutes, but get moving because it's very, very easy to let that fatigue take you over and it can paralyze you. There's been a couple days where I haven't had to do anything in the afternoon and it's really paralyzed me where I'm literally sitting on the couch so fatigued and I know I want to get up and I want to clean out my closet or I have something, a goal that I want to do for the day and this fatigue almost takes me over paralyzes me and I can't move. I'm like just sitting there. I can't do anything. And there's other times where I'll sit on my sofa just to have a glass of water and I wake up two hours later. I just fell asleep for two hours out of the middle of the day. That never happened to me before. I'd never had to take naps before. And I've got to say, this is again, a hormonal thing. If it's going on with you right now and you're in the stages of menopause, it's normal. It is one of the symptoms. Now, that's something you can talk to your medical doctor about 
or like I do, I ch I found something that gave me natural energy with my shake that I do mid-afternoon as soon as I feel it coming on and I have my energy to get through the rest of the day. So that's something that you, you know, you can talk to your doctor or try that shake, see if it works for you. So that's something that you're suffering with is fatigue. Nobody likes to feel fatigued, especially if you have a bit busy lifestyle and you have goals and you have passions. Because now is a great time for us to have to really follow our passions and to really find out what our gifts in life are and to share them. And it's pretty hard to share your passion when fatigue <laughs> is paralyzing you and you're sitting on your sofa and you can't move. And then, of course, getting a little absent-minded we think, oh my gosh, you know, are we getting early onset of Alzheimer's? Can I tell you? I mean, that we won't know for sure. You can go to the doctor and check that out. But again, that's a very, very common part of menopause. It's a symptom of menopause. Your hormones changing. What I like to do is keep my mind fresh and alert. Whenever I go to the grocery store or I go to run errands, I have a list. I keep it in my car just for a lot, just in case I need it. But I count how many items I need at the store. And there might be 10, 11, 5, 6, and I go in with the number of 11 items. And then I remember all those items and I take them with me. And I do that to keep my mind alert and to keep thinking and to keep kind of guessing myself and giving me quizzes. And this is good for anybody to do. I noticed when I was at the Apple store the other day, when I walked in and I saw, you know, they show the Apple watches and they show that the Apple watch shows you when it's time to, st to get up and move around. And the Apple watch tells you what time and reminds you that you're supposed to make a phone call and you're supposed to make a reservation for dinner. And it actually even reminds you <laughs> that it's time for you to go get your workout done. And it was like, it had all these things that it was reminding you to do. And I stepped back for a minute and thought, okay, we're becoming brain dead if we need to have a watch on our wrist telling us what to do at every minute. We need to be able to use the brain to do this stuff. So especially right now, if you're up getting absent-minded and you're forgetting something or you're forgetting to be at an appointment, you know, instead of, yeah, instead of using the Apple Watch to remind you, start giving yourself self-reminders, little things that you can do to keep your brain alive, keep it moving so you won't be as absent-minded. So that was another thing that really kind of overtook me and it was something that I really needed to work with. And even in my classes, I'll forget to do a leg. I'll do the left leg and I'll go to the next move and my class will say, we didn't do the right leg. Well, pretty much I've been doing that for the past 20 years because I get very distracted easily, but I noticed that it is a little bit more now. I need to stay a little bit more focused, but the fact that I keep using my brain to stay focused and keep reading books and keep giving me myself lists of just numbers and not the items on the list to keep my brain thinking constantly. So try that for yourself. You know, make If you're going to go out and run a bunch of errands today and you're really kind of struggling with staying on track and staying focused, have your list in the car of the things that you want to buy at each store. And then let's say you got to go to Home Goods and there's four things you need to pick up. Look at the look at the list, you got your four items, go in without your list and find those four items that you need and then bring them back. And then you can also look at the list when you get back to the car, make sure you got everything. But it's something that I think is really, really helpful for women and for men as well that are going through this time in their lives. Because men go through, they also go through their version of menopause as well. So their mind, again, can be distracted. So it's a really good thing to keep your brain brain functioning. So I thought, again, I'm gonna get through this thing so easily. It's not gonna be a joke for me. I'm not gonna gain the weight, and I did gain the weight. I gained about six pounds. Now, I was lucky. Honestly, I, I wanna be very transparent today. I was very lucky when I went into menopause. I was about three to four pounds underweight because of stress and busyness. So when I put on that six pounds, it was really only putting on maybe four pounds. But when I got to the five pound mark, I really started to know that I, this is something I need to change. So I started looking at different nutritions and studying different nutritions and trying different nutritions. Now first I would go back to what I've done for many years to be able to lose weight and I found out it wasn't working like it used to. I used to be able to just dial back on a couple foods and the weight would just drop off. That wasn't going to happen anymore. So I really started to look and in, investigate different kinds of nutrition and different kinds of food. And why do we put on this extra weight anyway? Well, yes, it's hormonal, 
People think it's fat. We're not putting on fat. We are putting on bloat when we're going through this. And so I started to think, if we're putting on bloat, what can I do to counteract that? And so I started exploring different nutritions. Now I have to take a break here, but when we get back, we're going to talk about the nutrition that I found and how well it's working and how you can make it work in your life. This is Ellen Como, uh, listening to Balacore Fitness Show on your hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS.